we can create a custom resource for our save game. Game dev journey. So the way we can do this is you can go to the scripts folder, right click, create new script. This is our custom resource. So I'm going to call it saved game, saved game. I'm going to say create. Go into scripts. We go to save game and here it is. Okay. Now let's give our, um, let's give this script a class name so we can find it from other scripts. So let's say class name is saved game. And instead of extending node, it's going to extend resource because this is going to be our custom resource. And now we need to know, well, what do you want to save in this resource? So let's say we want to save the player's position. So export bar called player, player position. And what type of data is it? It's a vector two. And another export, export bar called player Hearts, and that's how many hearts they have. So it's an int, and we can add as many different things as we want to save in this script. So now what we do, this thing is just waiting here to save these two values. So now what we do is we go back to our save and load script, and we're going to use the new keyword and make an instance of the saved game scene. So when we're saving over here, in our save game function, we can say var saved game is of type saved game and it's a new saved game instance. So saved game dot new. Then we don't have to do any of this stuff with files. We can just say saved game dot player hearts is equal to player dot health and we can say saved game dot player position is equal to player dot global position and then we use a built-in function called a resource saver resource saver dot save and we say well what do we want to save we want to save our saved game and where do we want to save it to we want to save it to the user folder called save game dot tres And now, where do we want to save it to? We use the resource saver and we use the save function. And we want to save save game. And where do we want to save it to? The user folder forward slash save game dot tres text resource. That'll be a human readable, editable resource file, just like Godot saves everything. Now, when we want to load it, we're going to reverse this process. So we're going to say var saved game, odd type saved game resource is equal to load. And what do we want to load? Well, we want to load the user folder forward slash save game dot text based resource. And then we put the variables back in. We say player dot global level position is going to be equal to save game dot player position and player dot health is going to be equal to save game dot player underscore hearts. I think we should put outside so that everything has access to it there. Okay, and that now should work in exactly the same way. So let's test it. Let's go down a level, 
right? We jog around, we save, we move back, reload, and there's there. So it works perfectly. Now, this method should also allow us to save and load dynamic game objects. What do I mean by that? Well, if we look at our level here, for instance, the box, you might break this box, which then spawns a strawberry, which wasn't there like this strawberry was at the start of the level. How do you save a dynamically created object? You can only create it once it's in the level. So this new saving method will allow us to save dynamic objects. So for example, what we can do is if we go back to our save and load, um, sorry, our, our saved game script, we could create another variable here called strawberry positions, which can be a type, an array type or array of vector twos. And we just make it empty for now because we don't know what the positions are. But as we get them, we'll fill this array with those positions. So now if you go back to the save and load script, when we're saving a game, we can go ahead and get all the strawberries that are in the level at the time of saving. So if you look at the level here, we have strawberries in a, a, a node called collectibles. We'll have all the strawberries. So if we go back to our save and load, we just need to loop through and get all the children of that collectibles node. So we can say var collectibles node is equal to, and we go get tree dot current scene dot get node and the node is called collectibles now we have access to that collectibles node now we say for each strawberry in the collectibles node dot get children so for all the strawberries we add their positions. So it'll be saved game dot strawberry positions dot append and we'll say strawberry dot global position. That'll save all the positions of the strawberries into the array. Then when we want to read them back in, we have to kind of reverse this process. So here, after saving the hearts, we can remove all the strawberries from the scene and then only add back the ones that we saved. So we can say var, well, we can do this collectibles node again, and we can say for each strawberry again. So we'll do all this again. And what we'll do is we'll remove the strawberry. So we'll say strawberry dot get parent dot remove child strawberry. Once it's removed, we'll free it. So we'll say strawberry dot q three. Now that they've all been removed, we can add them back safely. So, so we're going to say for every position in the saved game array uh, of strawberry positions, we're going to create a strawberry scene. So our strawberry scene is preload and we can just go and grab it we go to our scenes find the strawberry there it is so we just create a preload a strawberry scene then we instance the scene so we'll say are a new strawberry 
is equals instantiate uh, uh, is strawberry thing. Strawberry thing dot instantiate. Then we can add add the child to the scene, which is the new strawberry, and set its position. So we'll say new strawberry dot global position is equal to the position that was saved in the array. And that should do it. So if we test this, run our scene, we can go and get that strawberry on the other side. Let's just see, there might be a strawberry in these boxes. No. Okay, we'll get the strawberry on the other side. Okay, save the game. And we've got a problem. Let's have a look. Null instance. All strawberry in collectibles node dot get children. Spelling mistake again. Collectibles. Okay, let's retry. So let's go get the get the strawberry. Okay. Save the game. So now when reloads, there should be no strawberry there. Load. Okay. Probably spelling again. Get children in base instance. Spelling again. Try again. Okay, go ahead and get the strawberry. Okay, save the game. Jump over here. Load. And he's back there and there's no strawberry because it's gone and we saved the game when the strawberry was gone.